Hey, this is Dr. Amanda with Straight Smile Solutions, and today I'm gonna to be talking to you a little bit more about Deep Bites. I'm getting all psyched up for our webinar. I'm gonna be co-producing this with Ollendorf Laboratory. Right now, if you wanna register for it, you can go to straightsmilesolutions.com media. It's in our webinar section, and you can go ahead and sign up for it. But everyone is excited to learn more about phase one, and today we're gonna to be doing some content about Deep Bite Correction. So real quick, this is my kind of my go-to solution for any patient with a deep bite, but let alone a growing patient with a deep bite, especially a phase one patient with a deep bite. Here's an example right here of what's going on. So you can see there's a pretty significant deep bite. Of course, you'd like to verify it. Taking a Ceph is nice to verify the numbers as well, looking at it clinically. This is the model here. So what do we do, right? Now, most orthodontic treatment will help to level out the arches, especially if you get on the lower molars that will go ahead and help correct the deep bite a little bit. But if you want a super fast correction, this is my go-to solution. Also, it has the added benefit of helping you get on the lower teeth sooner if you are doing phase two. So this is called a fixed bite plate. And again, this was a sample that was donated to me by Ollendorf Laboratory. There are a lot of laboratories that do make this, but I will be co-producing our webinar with Ollendorf, so I just wanna give them some props. But you can have this made in a variety of different colors and shapes. This is a clear acrylic that's made there, but I always recommend that you let the patient have fun with it. Pick a color, pick glitter, let them own their appliance. They're gonna be way more excited about it, okay? So basically the steps are that you're gonna go ahead and throw some spacers in the back molars initially, okay? So let's say this is your patient. You're gonna go ahead, throw some spacers in, then I would take the scan or impression and send it off to the lab with the instructions, please fabricate anterior bite plate. And there's also fixed and removable versions. This is a fixed with bands, okay? If you're gonna be going on to doing brackets, you should ask for them to solder buckle tubes on there. If you're, this is just phase one and you're not gonna be doing any braces, you're just doing bite correction, you don't need to have the tube soldered on because that's usually a little extra money. Um, there's also a removable version. It looks like a retainer. Of course, that's going to be compliance-based, so pick your patient wisely. So that's pretty much it. You send in the scan or impression. I usually recommend throwing the spaces in first and taking them out before you do that. That way they can fit the bands better. If you have bands in stock, you can fit your bands first. Do a pickup impression, but this is a lot easier. Then you don't have to worry about stocking bands. It comes back to you like this. You go ahead and put your band glue in thin layer. My favorite band glue is made by a 3M Unitech. It's called Band Lock, B-A-N-D-L-O-K. Um, comes in colors, so when you go ahead and load it and, and uh, allow it to light cure, it's going to change to clear from, I think it's purplish, purple blue. Um, but if the fit is not very tight, then I recommend using like a Fuji base modified um, glass ionomer because it's a little bit thicker, but I wouldn't use that unless you really need to because you're going to have a hard time getting it off, okay? So yeah, you just like literally try it in first, make sure it fits. If it fits good, take it off. Um, having a band remover is helpful to take it off, but you don't have to have that, you know, you can just do it with cotton rolls and fingers too, if the, depending on the fit, right? Um, and then yeah, cement it. So cement it right on like this, okay? And light cure it. And that's pretty much it. Let it cook. You, this should actually stay in, I would say, a good minimum four months. I would like to see that in, if not longer. So let me show you what it looks like, the difference of what it looks like, right? Super deep, right? You only see, I'd say it's about 60 to 70% deep bite. We see a little bit of the lower incisors, but not all. This is not a good deep bite. Now, those of you who don't, know that, don't know that much about overbites, this will get worse over time. It will not get better. You need to have confidence in telling your patients that, okay, as they grow. So it is a progressive disease and over time, the lower teeth will start to touch the roof of the patient's mouth and cause frematis and periodontal destruction. So you must correct this. And the, er the younger the patient is, the better it corrects, okay? So now let's see what it looks like once we put the appliance in so you can see the difference. Holy cow, right? So if you had lower brackets on, whoo, you know, we don't even have to like put those kind of junk bite bumps on the back. Um, this will naturally allow the curve of speed to level out, whether you have braces or not. If you have braces on, it happens even faster because you can run some box elastics. I usually run my box elastics 
So I'll run my box elastics, not in the initial wire, but I'll run them if you are doing braces, maybe once you get up to an 18 my tie, and I'll run them from molar, molar, canine, canine. So it's a box, okay? So three, six, six, three. If you're talking international numbers, that's on this side. That would be two, three, two, six, three, six, three, three, okay? I usually would use for box elastics, I'm gonna use quarter medium in an 18 nine tie, okay? And I'm gonna stay in that appliance and in the box elastics until the bite fully touches on the sides. And you can see right now, the bite is open, right? So until all the teeth are occluding, you can check with articulating paper, the appliance stays in, okay, on both sides. And if patients want to speed it up, they can wear their box elastics. Again, if this is phase one, you don't have, you know, brackets on all the teeth, no need. Just let it settle on its own, right? And you can also build an anterior bite plate um, into removable appliances like Schwartz's, like Sagittal's, and all kinds of other things that you want to do it. So you can really kind of bling them out. It's really cool. Kill two birds with one stone. Um, really awesome in a phase one case. And we're going to be teaching you more about that in our seminar on November 5th. So we hope to see you there, but, and you can even modify the bite plate to make it incline, which kind of makes it act more like a class two appliance. So, wow, I know that was a lot of information. So I do recommend that you connect with us to learn more at straightsmilesolutions.com. And we will tell you more about how to use a bite plate. All right. Thank you so much. We hope to see you soon. Don't forget to visit our website. You can schedule an appointment for a complimentary consultation to learn more about ortho in your practice, whether you want to do phase one, phase two, aligners, um, braces, straight wire. We have a little bit for everybody. And um, yeah, don't forget to check out Ollendorf Dental Laboratory as well. All right. Thanks so much. Have a great day.